All right, it's now three minutes after seven. This is Morning Express on Friday. And in case you're joining us now, welcome aboard. It's time for us to review what the week has been. Later on, we'll also be reviewing what has been happening in the entertainment world. Uh, but this week, it's not been uh, very good entertainment when it comes to matters sugar. It's been a sweet, uh, sour kind of a taste in our mouth, given that we've had our leaders um, basically giving us different sides of the story. With some saying that there is impurities in the sugar, we also have uh, the CS for industrialization saying that there are no impurities. So who are Kenyans going to believe? We'd also have the Kenya Bureau of Standards coming in and giving another twist to that particular story. But at this point, I want to hand over to Zinzi Kibiku, my colleague, uh, who's going to reintroduce the guests that we have this morning, basically to review some of the stories that have been making headlines this week. Zinzi? All right, if you're just joining us, thank you so much for your time. It's 7 a.m. and that means it's time to, for us to take a look at the big stories, the hot stories of the week. And my panel this morning, Nick BKT in the middle, who is a lawyer as well as a political analyst, sitting closer to me, is Member of Parliament Corneli Serem, MP of uh, Al uh, Aldai, and of course joining us now on set, Godfrey Osotzi, nominated Member of Parliament. Gentlemen, thank you so much, Godfrey. It's yeah. good to join um, for you to be joining us this morning. Now, legislators earlier this week, the likes of Member of Parliament Mohammed Ali as well as Tindi mentioned names such as um, CS Cecilia Kariki of Health, Mwangi Kiunjuri, Governor Anwe Guru in terms of ESCC going after the big fish. Gentlemen, the big question here is that are Kenyans losing this war on grub, seeing that they are consistently going after the small fish and not the big league? Godfrey, I'll start with you. Well, uh, it is very disappointing. We are in a country of half measures. Mm -hmm. We do things halfway. We don't do things to completion. And this is the biggest problem. Because we have been talking about NYS, and then the sugar comes in. Maybe tomorrow something else will come in. Because we don't do things to the conclusive end. We know what we need to do in terms of uh, uh, fighting corruption. But we are not doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. For example, NYS. This is NYS number two. There was NYS number one. What did we do about it? Nothing. People were taken in, uh, they went and uh, they were released, and some of them even vied for seats, and they were elected using illicit money from NYS. Now we have NYS number two. The same schemes that were used in NYS number one were used in NYS number two. We are being told about IFMIS, we are being told about uh, uh, supplying air and all those things. Those things happened in NYS number one. My view is that NYS number one, number two, is a continuation of NYS number one. And all the people who were culprit in NYS number one should also be taken in. Governor Oiguru was mentioned. And we should not fear saying these things. He was, she was mentioned as one of the people who benefited from NYS number one. She ought to be called and say, asked, what is your relationship with the people who are now in Nick, Dubai Nick, and others? Is it that our laws are failing us? The laws have never failed us in this country. Never. We have very good laws in this country. As you can see, whenever somebody is arrested, Zinzi, we've never lacked charges to prefer. Mm -hmm. if, if the prosecution was in a situation where they're saying for this particular offense, we actually have no uh, prescribed uh, law that can charge you for this offense. That has never been the instance. But uh, I'm seated in the middle of legislators. Today I'm very honored. And... Uh, my question is, if legislators Zinzi can be crying like you and me, that now what are we going to do, this country, when these people have the mandate to actually call these people, you, the best you can do is to highlight these issues for Kenyans. But the two gentlemen have a constitutional mandate to actually check, to actually oversight. These are the people who can tell us, is it true? They can investigate as a committee. As I just told us yesterday, mm. if it was not for his committee, we would not have known if there was copper oh, and mercury. Right. Sure. Same situation here. If we feel that Waiguru had a test of NYS money, 
if we think Cecil, who's now a minister, Mweshimiwa, the two Mweshimiwas can actually call him into parliament. You remember the days of uh, Dr. Halwale? and uh, his uh, famous uh, speeches of impeachment. Mm -hmm. We've not seen that. And as I've said here before, now that there is a handshake, we are even in a more risky situation of seeing an impeachment. Honorable Sareb, care <coughs> to answer that as well as big legislators? First of all, what has failed us? Institutions. You are asking me a few minutes ago, what has failed us? I'm saying institutions has failed us. Two, it's not fair to say that we are doing nothing about it. Mm -hmm. It is actually him who has a problem with me disbanding ESCC. Because as members of parliament, that is the, the, the powers that we are given, he was given by the, uh, mm -hmm. by the constitution to handle institutions that don't actually do, do, do their part. Two, even, even judiciary has actually failed us. We have been given a, a, a ruling that anybody can go to court and stop members of parliament in their committees from actually investigating any topic if you're not comfortable with. You know, these are very strange that uh, even uh, judiciary can interfere with parliament. These are two arms of, 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 uh, of government. So how, if, if one, uh, one um, harm can interfere with the other, there's a problem. But we are not here crying. We are saying we are taking charge. There is a problem in this country. We, are, we need to fix it. The institution that was mandated to, to, to prevent, to prosecute, to educate on corruption is the SEC. It has failed. Okay? What is the result? We disband. That's my, that's my, that, that's my, my, solution. That's my solution. And my solution, it doesn't mean that I'm right. I'm saying, okay, I'm putting on the table. Let's discuss the merits and the merits. As, as we talk, merits are much higher than the merits. ESCC will go home. Honorable Sotsi, do you agree with your, member of your fellow member of parliament here that disband ESCC, get rid of it? I, I agree with the motion. Now my colleague that uh, one, institutions have failed us. Yes. And why has institution failed us? It's because, you know, the moment you start interfering with the dependent commissions, then you will not have institutions. We have seen progressively the interference in the independent mm -hmm. commission, the IEBC, the ESCC, the judiciary, and many other places. For me, I do not think disbanding ESCC would be a solution because we have been there before. We have disbanded ESCC, created a new one, Casa. but still we have that problem. What we are lacking is one, political goodwill to fight corruption. And number two, EACC does not have capacity to fight corruption. They don't have prosecutor powers. Do you so, think they should get prosecutor powers? Yes, yes. They should get so that they investigate and arrest. Because what they are doing now, they investigate and then they take the files to DPP. It is DPP to decide whether uh, whatever is contained in those files is enough to charge someone. But if they're already, they already filling investigations, if they can provide the DPP's office with proper heavyweight investigations, why do we need to give them extra powers to prosecute? They have the one job is, and they can do it. The Number two, is, it is also fair for you to understand what, what these uh, ESCC uh, are doing. I've done so much investigation also on their part. It is actually them who compromise on the files. It is not that it's true that the files actually fail when they go to DPP's offices. They, they are the one who, those who are on the top, interferes with the files that come from, 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 from the juniors. And that's what these guys are discussing about. It's all over. So the corruption is not only in other institutions, even on themselves. It's basically because of interference. Because you find that even some of those people who are appointed in, the, in ESCC have links to pol political leadership. They're compromised as well. Yes, yeah, they are compromised and as well. On that but note, if we have an independent organ, which has independence in terms of uh, recruitment of people to work there, in terms of its operation, then we will start seeing results. Maybe, maybe, maybe let me ask Mishimu a question. Maybe I'm not uh, understanding. This word disbandment can be somewhat complicated mm -hmm. to some of us. Mm -hmm. When you say you want to disband, do you want to mean that you want it totally out 
as an institution, or are you talking about an overhaul where you want the persons to go out and others to come in? Fresh Maybe that's I, not this not This parliament is, I want to reveal section 79 of the constitution. The entire body to disappear. Because the power to investigate lies with the, the DCI. We are duplicating roles. The powers to prosecute lies with DPP. Mm -hmm. Who are these characters? These are busy bodies, honestly. Okay? We are paying them three billion shillings a year. Three billion. It's not, it's not easy money. Before you came in, mm -hmm. I mentioned that the same, same guys that were messed with uh, uh, NYS are today in court, courtesy of DCI. Okay? In fact, they're going to ha have a hard time to get out, even to get bail. But the one, who, the, the uh, NYS one, they walked in and walked out because they're handled by uh, ESCC. Gentlemen, here's the thing. Mr. Yes. Kenyatta himself, recently on this whole issue and war of graft, said, and I quote, yes. I swear to you that the theft of public funds will come to an end. Nick, do you have confidence that Mr. Kenyatta, in his last years, in his last term, will properly fight this issue of graft without favorizing? One, I will say that uh, I am not certain if he will or if he will not. But for the first time, we heard him swear. In fact, his exact words were Akiamu. <laughs> but the question, I, I think he's the only person mm -hmm. who can actually fight corruption. Why? Mm -hmm. He is the only individual in the Kenyan constitution who is immune against uh, any sort of prosecution, to the extent that if by any chance he has meddled somewhere in any of these matters, for him is protected. What does that mean? It means he can prosecute, or rather he can ensure, or rather he can create an environment where anybody in this republic can be prosecuted. However, what we are seeing today I think the whole of this week, we've seen the DP come out and explain about the Langata uh, Hotel. We've seen him come out and explain <coughs> his uh, 1.5 billion house. We can, if this temperature can go on for a while, if we can have another Kiamungu next week, I am sure even if we will not get to the root but the environment will sh somehow have changed. President because Ho these are circumstances that we've never <coughs> seen in this country. I have never had the DP explain himself on some of these things, and I'm liking it. Let him come out and explain uh, so that we can also ask questions. And speaking of explaining... On the question of the lifestyle now. Yes, exactly. Yes. And speaking of, President, of, uh, of the whole issue of lifestyle, President Uhuru Kenyatta came out and suggested a lifestyle audit should be done to public servants, beginning with himself. Uh, his deputy, Ruto, has also come out to say, I will do the same thing. Rilo Odinga has backed the same calling. But here's the thing, gentlemen. This is not the first time. NAC in 2003 proposed the same thing. The um, public officers should be vetted. One. 2015, a proposal of lifestyle audit was tabled, but nothing happened. Now, here we are again in 2018 saying let's have a lifestyle audit. Despite the big um, leaders coming out and saying, I support it, and I'll also take lead on that. I'll start with you, Mishimio, because you said you were already done your life, or you would do a lifestyle audit today if required. If, if do you have confidence that this lifestyle audit will positively affect this one graft? First of all, it will not happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say that, uh, I repeat uh, before this uh, audience, mm -hmm. that it will not happen. It will not happen? It will not happen. Uh, not because I don't want, because I know this country, I know the uh, judiciary that we have in. Somebody tomorrow will go to court and get orders. They will, somebody will go to court and get orders, not to have it. Because it will feel like a personal attack? Yes, it will happen. Anybody can challenge me anywhere. It will not happen in this country. Somebody will rush to court and will get orders. Because even those who are in courts, again, don't want to be even vetted. The way uh, ESCC, when, we, uh, in, uh, when uh, Chris Mamalo sponsored a motion in, in Parliament to have actually um, a secretary vetted, they rise to court. They got orders. Honorable oh, Sotsu, do you think the same thing, that it, the lifestyle audit will not happen? Well, uh, personally, uh, as it is now, I, I think uh, lifestyle audit is nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because, one, we do not have a legislation. 
to govern it. Based on what? Yeah? There is no law. Which institution will do it? We need to set up a law. Parameters? Uh, to, to govern a, a lifestyle audit. Number two, as I've said from the beginning, this is a country of half measures. Huh? We keep doing things halfway and repeating them all over again. We, every year, fill with declaration forms. We just fill them as a uh, It's a peer exercise. But no one follows up to find out what has Honorable Sotsi said in his form. Mm -hmm. What has uh, Honorable Serem. Uh, Serem said in his form? What has, has uh, Uru Kenyatta said in his form? They should start there. They should start telling public that this is what Honorable Sosi said he owns. Do you have a difference? You have a difference. Let them publish. Let them publish the worth declaration forms that fill, fill in every year. Nick, do you agree with the legislators? Number two, legislators? Just if, if they are saying that uh, there is no point or there is no framework where to start from, you see, this is the danger of sitting in the middle of uh, politicians. <laughs> They are saying that there is nowhere to start from, yet you just heard them say that they always fill wealth declaration forms. That is precisely where we start from. And you see, not everything can be uh, sorted out by, by the law. We also have uh, political measures, like they all know. Sometimes we've made noise as politicians and things have changed. So once they make uh, their wealth declaration forms public, then us as the public can also start from there. Mm -hmm. You as the media can also start from there. Some of these things, remember there was this uh, activist, human rights activist, who one time engaged the DP and said, let the DP uh, make public his KRA returns. Once you make your public your KRA returns, we can precisely tell what you've acquired, what you've transacted for the last financial one year. So with these two measures, care returns, wealth declaration, we can precisely tell what you acquired legit and illegit. But I would agree with Mushmi Ososi on one thing, that what is lacking in this country is actually the political resolve mm -hmm. to make things happen. Wow. Our biggest prayer as Kenyans, and I'm sure it's the speak in every Kenyan's lips today, that for sure, is Uhuru being serious? Or is he which hunting anybody? Or are they targeting somebody for 2022? Or actually Uhuru wants to leave a legacy? If Uhuru wants to leave a legacy, he is the only Kenyan who can push this. But allow me to say this lastly. Unfortunately, also in this country, anybody who can get this thing done, his hands have also gone into the same jar. You only need to check one inch and you find him. You remember when they started the NYS story, I, ha I read on the papers, me, I don't know, but I read on the papers that there was a family of an uncle to the president. So then you, the, the, you find that everybody's hands are somehow be, in the be, jar, that everybody fears to throw the first but stone. But tell us, the guys that actually have messed up this country are the lawyers. All the, this uh, loot are actually hidden in, in, in your account. You protect even tomorrow morning, if you are hired to protect somebody or get orders so that we can stop the same exercise, you are the first one to go. And Mr. Osotzi, do you also... Yeah. Let me comment on what uh, uh, Biketi has said. You know, the biggest problem we have in this country is uh, our value systems mm. is at the lowest, the very lowest. Integrity huh? zero. Yeah, it's very lowest. And then we have a constitution that is so democratic. You can go to court on anything. anything. So those two things combined is also a big problem. And that's why we insist everything we want to do, let us have a legal framework. If we are talking about lifestyle audit, can we have a proper law to guide us on that? Okay. Otherwise, for example, let me give you an example. Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, the president, and the deputy president, they have said they are ready for lifestyle audit. Mm -hmm. Who in this country <laughs> will go and ask Uhuru Kenyatta, oh, what sure. do you own, Mr. President? Eh? Who? Which officer in government will do that? This eh? proposal that if we are going to start a lifestyle audit, especially for President Uhuru Kenyatta, it was said that it should go all the way to our forefathers. What were your thoughts on that? Well, uh, it's a... Uh, it is sensible, 
but it's not practical. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not practical. Because how do you audit someone who is dead? It's not possible. Okay. Let's change uh, gears for a minute, gentlemen. And also, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this because we talked about the issue of the Suga saga. Um, and earlier this week, you said, and I quote, the who's who in the political and business classes are well known around Harambe House. That's on the issue of the um, sugar scandal. Now, the latest after the committee grilled cabs came out and said, there's no mercury, but there's copper. We have two CSAs from the same government who are on different measures when it comes to this issue. What do you think should be done to both carry and cabs moving forward? First, as a correction, I didn't say Harambe House. I said Harambe Avenue. Harambe Avenue has treasury. It has office of the president. It has office of the deputy president. It has the AG's office. So that is where we have a concentration of government offices. So, and these are people who need to tell us, who is this who is bringing in bad sugar? They have the answers. They have the answers. And this issue of sugar, it is very annoying. Because every year, we talk, talk about sugar. In 2016, this public outcry was there. Parliament came up with a report, Agriculture Committee and Finance Committee, on what needs to be done. That report recommended a number of measures that needs to be taken to streamline the importation of sugar, to streamline safety of sugar, to streamline revenue collection, to deal with issues at Mumia Sugar Company, Zoya Sugar Company, Chemilil, Sony Sugar, and others. Up to today, those resolutions by parliament have not been implemented by anyone. In 2017, we had the issue of importation of sugar from Uganda. We talked about it. The government said they were going to deal with it. It died. Now, this time around, it has come back. All right. On we cannot continue operating on half measures as a country. Mm -hmm. We have to get our acts clear, and we have to deal with this matter. Honorable Serem, I'll let you have the last word, given that our time is up. One, the moral duty as a country. The sugar that was imported uh, on the 21st July of last year costed importer 74 million 600 and 55,000 shillings for 21,000 metric tons. We translate to 35 shillings and 50 cents per kilo. We are selling the same sugar for 120 shillings in our shelves. Somebody is making almost four times. If the cost of production in Kenya costs for about 90 shillings, what about the imported ones, which is only 35? And nobody, even the, even the treasury, who, ha, who, who has um, a deficit budget, could have taken advantage of the same, actually gave them duty free. Mm -hmm. You know, morally. Two, when you talk about uh, members of parliament, on what we do, I think we are doing our, our bit, OK? The other institutions are letting us down. Even if there is a goodwill for us to bring up legislation to articulate what we are discussing here, we have a we have now a court ruling that if we have a sensitive issue that now we assume we want to discuss about framework on how to audit each and every one, you can now injunct yeah, the same committee. You can get orders to stop the committee from moving forward. So I, as I said earlier, the audit would not happen in this country, mm -hmm. looking at what has happened or what is likely to happen. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, the only institution that has given mandate to prosecute, to investigate, to prevent, to educate, which ESCC has failed, they should go home. Powerful point yes. to leave it at that. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Honorable Cornelis Rem, um, Nick Bikati, lawyer as well as a political analyst, and Godfrey Osotsi, gentlemen, Asante Nisana. Michael? Thank you very much, Zinzi. And uh, just a summary of what uh, you have discussed and uh, take home. Basically, Honorable Corneli Serem says the lifestyle audit is not going to happen. And if that's coming from a member of parliament, well, let's wait and see because the president has given the directive and the decree that it should happen. And of course, he has put himself on the line saying, let it go ahead. But uh, Honorable Sotsi also says, who is going? And ask a very valid question. 
who is going to audit the president? And uh, even if they audited him and found, you know, maybe property of the deputy president for that matter and found property that possibly is questionable or carry returns that are, you know, questionable, would they have the power and the authority to be able to um, call him and say, you know, put it to book? So basically, again, another valid question. And uh, Biketi, our analyst, says only Uhuru has the power to deal with graft. Question is, is he going to deal with it? Or is this another, you know, statement that is made and flies in the air? It is the first time that he has sworn and said, Aki ya mungu, kuna watu watashikwa. Sasa, wacha tuone kama watashikwa, ama itakuwa tu nikuongea, but that's where we wind up our segment on the week in review. Of course, the conversation goes on online. The hashtag is Morning Express KTN. But as you can see, we're just about to change tact here and kick a few balls in studio and look at what's been happening in the World Cup. So do stay with us right here on Morning Express. For now, we take a short break. We'll be right back with updates on World Cup but also we'll be looking at what's been making news in the entertainment world. We take that break.